I don't even know where to start with this film. Sally is a film I watched a couple times when I was a kid. Because back in the day, you had a VHS tape where you would tape from stuff on the video store. So, rent it from the video store, you get a blank tape, and you put like three movies on each VHS tape. So, when I ever watch Eddie Murphy stuff, like The Golden Child, Beverly Hills Cop, 48 Hours, uh, this would be a on the mix. Best defense. But even as a kid, I didn't like this film, and to this day, it's a really shitty movie. Now, this is a film where apparently it was a Dudley Moore film. And it went so badly in test screens that they're like, we can't release this shit. Well, Eddie Murphy, here's this guy. We had hits with 48 Hours and Trading Places. Let's put him in the movie as strategic guest star. Which, that's how he's credited in the movie. In the beginning of the film. Strategic guest star, Eddie Murphy. How many films do that? How many films actually say strategic guest star Eddie Murphy? Usually that's like a, something on a TV show, but that's actually in the movie. As Eddie Murphy would say later on when he hosted SNL, he did it because he got a big paycheck. Wait, how much money are you paying me? So they film like 20 minutes of footage. I know it's not more than that. And spread it out throughout the film. And then it makes me wonder, like, not wonder too much, but the stuff they cut out of the Deli Moore stuff. Because the thing, if they made the Deli Moore movie, it must be like 80, 90 minutes long. You're cutting like 20, 30 minutes out of that to put, you know, 20 minutes of this Eddie Murphy stuff in between. It makes me wonder just how much worse that Deli Moore film was without Eddie Murphy. Because the only enjoyment I could get out of the movie is a few instances of Eddie Murphy. Because he still had that fire and energy, even though he's not given much to do. He's pretty much just stuck in a tank with these two guys. And once in a while, there's a fun one with Eddie Murphy, where he's shooting at a guy, making him run away. Give, give me my rich little, gives him the machine gun. Do Macro Jackson. Now do James Brown. Ow, hot pants. Making the guy run away. Or these kids are smashing stuff against this tank. I'm going to kill you guys. And then the moms come out. No, I'm sorry. I love women. You crazy desert bitch. <laughs> Pretty much, it's either that stuff or the tank he's in is a shitty tank. And it goes haywire and crushes cars or goes into buildings. Gets into a little battle at the end. His fucking tank won't work to shoot this helicopter. Ultimately does. They shoot the chopper and they're fine. The 20 minutes is pretty much that for Eddie Murphy. Again, there's some nice smiles and chuckles out of Eddie. But the rest of the film? The Deli Moore stuff? Fucking abysmal. Now, some of the people you have in the Dilly Moore part, which is most of the movie, sadly. Again, it's like three fourths of the film. Now, I wanted to get the actors' names. You had Kate Capshaw, who was in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. She's in this as Dilly Moore's wife. Helen Shaver, who I remember from The Believers, which is a pretty decent voodoo movie, movie with Martin Sheen. She was also in Tremors 2, which I think is an underrated sequel. Let's see, she was also I'm trying to think what else she's been in. Let's see, Tom Noonan, he makes an appearance. Tom Noonan, who was the villain in Manhunter, he was in the Monster Squad as the Frankenstein monster. He's in this flick for a tiny bit. This one guy who plays this KGB guy, David Rash? Rash? I recognize him. He was on this TV show called Sledgehammer. And then he was also one of the bad guys in this pretty good Tom Selleck film called An Innocent Man. And there's a few recognizable people. I can't remember their names. Anyway. Dudley Moore is one of those guys I didn't grow up with. 
I've heard of and seen trailers to films like Ten and Arthur, Arthur Two on the Rocks. I think once as a kid I saw Santa Claus the movie, which he was in, which I don't remember a damn thing other than I think John Lithgow ate candy and flew away or something. I, something like that. But I didn't grow up with the guy. So I, I can't say I have any good or bad to say about him as a his career wise but I swear it seems like he's drunk throughout most of the film I don't know if it's just the character he's playing but he just seems fucking drunk I don't know maybe that's just how he normally acts and his story he works for this group who deals with the electronics called Dynatechnics Incorporated and they want to get this job with the government to help build these tanks and the thing that they have to work on is the dip gyro which goes in the tank it's not working everyone at his job is an asshole his wife is a bitch Kate Capture's character is pretty bitchy and Dilly Moore's character is pretty unlikable too I mean the beginning of the film it cuts between two sex scenes Yeah. Eddie Murphy with a belly dancer, having fun. Meanwhile, Deli Moore is trying to get some action from Kate Capshaw. And I don't want to see Deli Moore say lines like, Mr. Johnson wants to say hi, or looking down, oh, you have cobwebs down there. And of course, she punches him in the dick. And so... He goes in the work, everyone's an asshole to him, it doesn't fucking work. Oh yeah, during the test of their dipstick bullshit. Again, it's like, they try to make Deli Moore say raw shit, it doesn't work. Like, fucking with his co-worker while they're watching Helen Shaver and going, Hey, what would happen, like, what would you do if you could put your mouth on her nipple? I'd give my left leg. What would happen if you could feel the moist heat between her legs? I'd give up my balls, both of them. Like, this is the... I should have known better, because, yeah, granted, Gloria Katz and Willard Hook wrote Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That was a fluke. Temple of Doom is a good movie. Maybe someone ghost wrote it. Because after this, they did Howard the Duck. And I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Howard the Duck. I do think it's a pretty damn bad movie. Is it the worst movie ever? No. Are there good elements? Yeah, the score is pretty good. Among other stuff. But I can't call it a good movie. I know my friend Michael CP loves the film. I think it's a bad movie. This is worse, though. <laughs> but there... Based on this and how the Duck, no wonder why they didn't work much longer in uh, in life. I mean, in the in the career. I guess it's based on a fucking novel, easy and hard ways out. But like the original idea, before you get Eddie Murphy and you paid his big paycheck for, to shove him in there. Like the original idea for this movie is let's make a comedy with Dudley Moore about. Here's his dip gyro for part of a tank, and then the KGB won it, and then he also wants to sleep with Helen Shaver and cheat on his wife, and then this, oh, we don't put wires on you to catch the KGB guy, crazy shit happens, they both get shot, Deli Moore gets shot in the shoulder, is in an ambulance, then he realizes, oh, this dip gyro isn't going to work for this tank. Which I don't even know what was reshot and what wasn't when they decided to put Eddie Murphy in the movie. <clears throat> it just seems like a lame fucking premise for a comedy. Or hell, if you want to see a comedy from the 80s that deal with the KGB, the K motherfucking GB, watch Jumpin' Jack Flash. Jumpin' Jack Flash is a much funnier movie, better movie, better written more cohesive, and altogether much more entertaining film. 
with a very fun Whoopi Goldberg. That's my favorite film she's done. Is Jumpin' Jeff Flash. <coughs> you see this face? This is a face of a woman on the edge. Yeah, my wife has the same face. Now you got two choices. Do you want to work here? Or do you want to live? How about I you so hard in the nuts they get lodged in your fucking nostrils? <laughs> Jumpy Jack Flash, man, I just want to watch that again. I've reviewed that like twice on this. But I want to watch that film again after this bullshit. At least it was Eddie Murphy barely in the film against like total 20 minutes because like the first 10 minutes is like switching between Dudley Moore and Eddie. And then after that it's Dudley's movie until like 35 minutes in. And then you get like 3 minutes of Eddie. And then it's a Dudley Moore film until like an hour and 7 minutes in. And then you get like 2 minutes of Eddie. Then like from an hour and 17 minute it kind of goes back and forth between the two. And like Dudley Moore stuff is so boring, so unexciting, so unfunny. Well, I don't even get what their attempts at humor was. Their Tessens Dip Gyro thing, it doesn't work. Tom Noonan Talks at a bar with Deli Moore. Deli Moore doesn't want to talk to him. Tom Newton acts weird and quirky and slips his floppy disk into Deli Moore's suitcase without him knowing. Tom Newton leaves with the guy from Sledgehammer, the TV show. And David Rash, that guy, at least he was attempting to be, he was, you know, quirky and energetic and not the typical KGB guy He's saying stuff, oh, what a bummer, and he, I, he, he was trying to be energetic, but just the writing or the directing or whatever failed him. But I will say, at least he was trying. He was kind of... Of Deli Moore's part, probably the most interesting guy in that movie. <laughs> so then he gets the disc. People think he fixed everything. He goes along with it. He's a creep because he wants to cheat on his wife. Yeah, his wife has been bitchy, but still you cheat on your wife. And you got a kid, so it makes you look like a fucking asshole. Because he's trying to fuck Helen Shaver. Then at the part of the KGB guy grabs him, gives him a bribe. Dudley Moore takes it. Again, this whole time he seems a fucking drunk. And... Then... Government guys get Dudley and tell him you don't put on a wire and you don't go to him and some other stuff happens which ends with the KGB guy getting shot and killed and Dudley getting shot and put into an ambulance. <clears throat> and again, like I was saying before, it makes me wonder what was in the original movie and what was reshot. Like maybe it ended in the ambulance? I don't know. Maybe the shot app, the stuff after was reshot since they had Eddie in here. Because I'm trying to picture, like, without the Eddie Murphy footage, this whole finale with, oh, this tape won't work. And Dudley Moore's like, what? You can't go along with it. Oh, we're, we'll fake the test so we can get the, the money and we'll get the job. And it doesn't matter. And Dudley Moore's like, but wait a minute. And then he comes up idea to fix it, and he breaks in. They won't trying to throw him out. He's trying to tell him if you do this, it'll work and appeal to them. Would that be really a worth a shit ending to a movie? It's still not, even with the Eddie Murphy stuff. But without it, like picture, if you ever see this film, picture it without the Eddie Murphy stuff, and it's so much worse. And you know they did reshoots with Dudley Moore because you see this picture here with Eddie Murphy. With, I forget what kind of hat that is. That's that in the movie. That is from the deleted ending where these two guys were on screen together. I think it was like Eddie Murphy getting off a bus and talking with Dudley Moore and they have a conversation. I have no idea why you would take that out. They think about it. If you're paying a chunk of money to Eddie Murphy to be the strategic guest star, 
why would you cut a scene that involves him? Why would you cut a scene when you're promoting as stars? These two guys, you cut a scene where they're in the same frame. It, it shows the incompetence all around. Like they really thought just shoving Eddie Murphy there for 20 minutes would save the entire film and make bank at the box office. Deleting that, like, it would not have saved the film. I will admit, I would be curious to see the scene, to see these two guys on this. Even though I didn't grow with Dudley Moore, I know enough about them. See how they work together. Do they work good? Do they work bad? I don't know. I'd be curious. But... I did not mind some of the music by Patrick Williams. It's like, I thought some of the music by Patrick Williams was pretty decent for the type of film it was trying to be. A. Murphy, he was given nothing to work with, but even then, I got some smiles and chuckles off his stuff. That's really all the good I can say. Helen Shaver was sexy. That's like the only three good things I could say about this film. Just Dudley Moore, his character is a creep. The dialogue they give him, don't, I don't buy Dudley Moore being like raunchy in dialogue. I don't need to see that. And his story is so fucking boring and unfunny and uninteresting and a slog to sit through that you want to push the fast forward button. I, I can guarantee there's people who just have this. They just fast forward to the Eddie Murphy parts. I'm going to watch this film. It'll take me about 20 minutes. Just fast forward, watch all the Eddie Murphy parts, take it out, put it back in your collection. I could easily see that happening. Be a best defense. <clears throat> and there are pictures of that deleted ending on line that you can see and you can find and look for yourself. Which is funny, there's pictures but there's no deleted footage or anything. <coughs> but yeah, a lot of times when you try to fix a film that much it doesn't end well. It just doesn't. This is one of those prime candidates, prime examples of that. But yeah, best of I don't know what else to say. Thanks for watching. Take care. This movie is a fucking piece of shit. And definitely of the early Eddie Murphy films, his worst one by far. But thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.